This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Shake them ropes, Jeff Hawkins, Chris Novembrino doing your Royal Rumble and Worlds Collide preview show. Chris, how broken up are you over the death of Mr. Peanut? I My shell is cracked. It, it's shattered. I've even forgotten the name of the company that Mr. Peanut is from. Uh, planters. Yeah, I think that's going to be a problem for them, though, because I think more people think about Mr. Peanut than they do the name Planters. Well... A peanut with a top hat, cane, and monocle. They ate the rich. Literally. He's gone. He's gone. And now we'll probably have a more blue-collar peanut in its place. Or something like that. I don't know. I, it was so dumb. Why kill <laughs> Mr. Kid? Peanut? Yeah. What did he ever do to anybody? I, are we, are like, we gonna get? Are we who, gonna get a new what was hip the meeting peanut? Like where they got the company planters got pitched this idea of kill your mascot that people are neutral to slightly positive towards, as though like no. there was some <laughs> deep level of resentment against Mr. Peanut that you got online, you got on Twitter, and, and there were all these people who were like, "Mr. Peanut, man, I hope he dies. I hope he eats it." We're gonna get a gonna get a young Peanut on a skateboard going, "Hey guys." Try my new planters. It's like <laughs> the poochie version. They're gonna poochie version. it. Yeah, poochie they're gonna poochie up. it. Yeah, poochie. <laughs> oh, Chris, on a scale from not surprised to not surprised, how surprised were you? As I'm breaking the news to you now, because you hadn't heard about it, Vince McMahon and Pat Patterson apparently made uh, fools of themselves at Rocky Johnson's funeral, uh, including. Uh, Vince McMahon, apparently, allegedly, this is according to superstar Billy Graham, but it's been uh, corroborated by someone who's not superstar Billy Graham. So that makes it a little bit more uh, truthful, perhaps, that uh, Vince basically said the only good thing Rocky Johnson had ever did was squire the rock and then strutted off stage in that Vince McMahon way. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Somber, okay, and apparently, apparently, Pat Patterson just has lost his mind and was just cussing up a storm and mfing Rocky Johnson at the funeral. That's not the time. <laughs> I don't care. It's not the time. It's not the time to get 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 you know the final blow in. Dwayne was there, egos. right? I I think so. Yeah. Wow! Is it, if it's it, look, if everybody agrees it's a roast, then it's then that's fine. If it's not, now's not the time to air your dirty laundry about the dead. So the number two pay per view in the WWE canon is going to be on Sunday. We've had title changes this week. We have new tag team champions on Raw in the form of Buddy Murphy. And Seth Rollins. We have a new NXT North American champion in Keith Lee. Um, NXT is going to be trying to do a lot in these next two weeks. And it's almost, it's almost um, intimidating to me how much they're going to try and do because we have worlds collide this week. We have takeover next week. We have the dusty classic on Wednesday on the go home show we're we're switching titles. Um, NXT lost by about a hundred thousand viewers to AEW this past week. Um, are they just throwing a lot of things at the wall and trying to make it stick Chris? Because I would think that a takeover usually had great builds and this one, it feels like they're trying to jam two or three different builds on a two hour show. And it's just too much. Yeah, I I don't attribute that to the Wednesday Night Wars. I attribute it more to a lack of foresight when they planned out 
the NXT schedule last year because all these takeovers and stuff are planned months in advance. And this particular tightness in the calendar doesn't lend itself to concluding storylines or building storylines in a way that they can conclude in linear fashions. Like the reunion of DIY, it's fun, but it also feels very rushed we haven't had that moment with Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa I I guess they'll have to try to sandwich that in next week but to your point I think it would have been good to build up the Imperium and Undisputed Era feud a little bit better although like the beats in the story they've had have been good they've just been sandwiched Um, I just don't understand the scheduling of a takeover for next week the week after the Royal Rumble that uh, to me, it, it was almost, you know, like being difficult for difficult sake to say, we're not going to do a takeover Royal Rumble weekend. Instead, we're going to do this multi brand. And at the time, I, at the time, it was going to be like the mania thing that they do at uh, what's the name of their bi- big uh, shopping center slash taping thing it, it, where they brought the 205 live people in as well and it was just it, it's it was, it's just i don't know i if i were in houston for the rumble i'd feel a little insulted to be honest with you that i'm not getting a takeover yeah i think that's probably the bigger issue right someone who would consider traveling in for the royal rumble is going to be far less likely to travel yeah. in for the royal rumble if there's not nxt to watch because the person who's going to travel for WWE is either the diehard person who collects all the merchandise and is really into being a WWE fan. It's not even necessarily about wrestling. Or there's someone who's really into wrestling and what they really probably enjoy is the NXT TakeOver. And they'll come in to see Royal Rumble to check off Royal Rumble from their WWE pay-per-view list. But really... The wrestling that they want to watch during the weekend is going to be there at that NXT TakeOver with an augment coming at Royal Rumble or WrestleMania. Well, you can tell it also is having an effect on the storyline because we had Bianca Belair come out and interrupt the Tony Storm versus Io Shirai match where you're trying to build Storm as a competitor for Rhea Ripley. And then you also had the big the big main event of this Worlds Collide is Imperium versus the Undisputed Era. Imperium costs the Undisputed Era their match in the Dusty Tag Team Tournament, and then they turn right around and they have the Imperium team lose clean to Dunn and Riddle. What which- a weird <laughs> bucking of expectations that was in, in an unsatisfying way. I yeah, thought I mean, that why- the Undisputed Era were clearly going to return yes. fire on Imperium. Yes, you, you thought for sure... Okay, they're going to screw them. And I wouldn't have minded that. I mean, but, but at the same time, they're going, well, we need to keep the, the broser weights. Or I loved joint manipulation. That, that Joint manipulation that is a fantastic tag team Made name. me howl. I, I died a death laughing at, <laughs> at Riddle saying that. But well, yeah, originally, building- Zach said that. Gibson said that first. Oh, that's right. Yes. The, the, the great Zach Gibson. Yeah, I mean, you're you're trying to keep that team strong for the Wednesday finals to the Dusty Classic, which aren't on the takeover either. It's just all it, it, they're they're not they're not planning things. They're not thinking. Nobody's asking questions. It seems it just seems like we're throwing all this stuff out there to try and beat AEW, and I think they'd be better served doing a little bit more planning and telling great stories because AEW has its own problems telling stories other than no NXT has a much better foundation with the undisputed era versus Imperium than AEW does with any of their sort of factional warfare that they would have. I I think the the lone exception, I think too. Yeah. The lone exception is this hangman page slow burn, which I think is being handled rather well. Interesting. Okay. All right. I I would have seen them lose here tonight. Okay. I I I, I wouldn't have actually had them win the title. Hmm. How do you feel about Keith Lee winning the uh, NXT North American title? I thought that that was also rushed. And t- did you? T- yeah. To to the point. 
We didn't even get to sit in Keith Lee winning the title when we're rushing out Imperium here. So Keith Lee is going to feel like this afterthought, the Undisputed Era are going to be distracted from getting comeuppance on Keith Lee. They'll get back around to it eventually. I I just thought it was a bit of a momentum killer for their story. I I agree. I like like taking a moment after champions win and letting that sink in as important rather than we have this story we need to tell quick get the imperium guys out there and if you say we can't finish this episode with keith lee standing strong that's not a strong enough finish to the episode then maybe we shouldn't be doing the title change this week agree agree totally agree um we will see if this uh if this carries over to saturday night in terms of being a fractious thing for the Undisputed Era, are they going to start to break that team apart, or are they going to come back together? We have six matches announced here. Chris, let's go through them right now. Your pre-show match, the NXT UK Women's Champion, Kaylee Ray taking on Mia Yim. I think this is go- this is going to be one of those hard-hitting affairs, but Kaylee Ray is obviously not going to lose, I don't think. Yeah, I don't see Kaylee Ray losing. I think maybe the only way that could be different if it was no DQ. I wonder if we won't even see this match until next week, though. Yeah, it, it says here it's it's supposed to take place on the pre-show, right? R- so they're gonna oh, get like yeah. five minutes. Yeah, or yeah. if it if it's if it's broadcast on there, if it's not taped for next week, which which is very possible, it could be um, played on there. Uh, you you alluded to it earlier. The reuniting DIY Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa taking on Mustache Mountain, Trent Seven and Tyler Bate. Where are the great promos between Trent Seven and Johnny and Tommaso Ciampa talking a bunch of trash to each other? Like this should be a really hot match. I'm really excited for, and we are just jamming right into it. Uh, it's a great match. Should be Agreed. well worked, I, but man, yep. promos! What a great opportunity missed here. No, I I fully fully concur with you on on this. I think this might be. Look, I I know that there's been some tag matches in New Japan so far this year that have been off the off the charts. This might be the tag team match of the year so far. Um, like this when all could said be and done. really, really dope. I have high expectations for this match. As do I. I am looking so forward to this um, that it'll carry me through the rest of the of this card. To be honest with you, um, not that I hate the card, uh, but you know, it, it's 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 like an opening and closing match card with stuff in the middle. Yes, that's a that's a perfect way to put it. Speaking of stuff in the middle. Fatal four-way match for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Angel Garza taking on Isaiah Swerve Scott, taking on Jordan Devlin and Travis Banks, the latter two, your NXT UK representatives, having won qualifying matches on the show this week. Um, I don't see the title changing, but man, would I love Jordan Devlin to be the standout here. I... Man, I think we Travis, don't need Bank- a Travis Banks is going to be there. I, like yeah. we, we need Jordan Devlin versus Angel Garza. Yes, cutting promos on each other as well. Yes, because well I, th- I think those two. This would- doesn't actually have to be that deep of a card. You don't need a lot of personnel to have a really good card for this type of brand war show. It's actually almost kind of more interesting with like less is more. And yeah, Angel Garza versus Jordan Devlin would be a really good match. I like Isaiah Swerve Scott, especially watching him on Lucha Underground, his kill shot. Like I, I'm very, very familiar with his work. But we're not very familiar with his work on WWE television. They've given him a little bit of shine, but I think he still needs more elevation to be even at Devlin and Garza's level. And Travis Banks is not unskilled. It's just he does not excite. No. He grunts a lot and he works a great match, but his personality isn't there and it's not coming through. And they haven't really characterized him very well on the television show either. But I'm saying he doesn't I mean, excite in the ring too sometimes. There's something that's just no. missing. Yeah. Um, Finn Balor taking on Ilya Dragunov. Chris, what chance does Ilya Dragunov have of pulling off the upset here? 
hmm. <laughs> no, this is interesting because I thought that there might be like a, a little swerve happening here with Finn Bauer maybe having some sort of alignment with the Gallus boys at some point. Um, or some sort of storytelling happening during this match that could, I guess, suppose cost Finn Bauer the match, but I think it's more likely to cost Ilya Dragon off the match. So I'm going to say it's low. I'm going to say it's like 20%. I think the answer is zero. I, I do. I, 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 I played with it for a while. I thought, man, that would be great if Ilya Dragunov got a win, and then it could possibly propel something on NXT UK. This will fuel Joe Coffey's disdain for Ilya Dragunov. That's Dragunov. not going to happen. That's not going to happen. I, <laughs> it's, I think this is going to be a fun little match. I just... I think the crowd's gonna the crowd's gonna babyface Finn Balor here. Yes, and it's gonna be weird because he's supposed to be a heel, but they're all gonna be cheering him because Ilya because because <laughs> Ilya Dragunov doesn't play a great babyface, and Finn Balor's too popular to be a heel right now. That he needs he needs a heavy, he needs a stable, he needs something other than being this lone wolf type. Well, he also needs to attack wildly popular babyfaces instead yes. of. Average Gargano. to above average baby faces. Like no, going after Gargano, that might actually get some heat on Finn Balor. Going after Tommaso Ciampa, or like specifically targeting DIY, who are really popular in the crowd's not the crowd's not gonna turn on DIY if Finn Balor attacks them. But like someone like Ilya Dragonoff or someone at Dragonoff's level of popularity, I think you're right. We've seen Finn Balor get turned de facto babyface on NXT a number of times. It's that, if you want to talk about a problem for NXT US, that is a real problem. And that's even more so a problem on AEW too, where it's hard to keep heels heels. Interesting news, or at least a rumor being broken by Mike Johnson of PW Insider this week. The NXT Women's Championship possibly being rebranded as just the NXT Championship. Um, to take away the the women out of the title so that it'll still be just a women's title, but you will not refer to it as a women's title. I I don't know. I don't see the harm in it. I don't think it's going to equate to the main belt that Adam Cole currently holds just because you take out women out of the thing. I think it's just two separate divisions, and it's fine. I, I understand... I understand the people who are for it, and I understand people who are just like, what's the need? Yeah, I I guess I get both sides of the argument. I think I'm a little closer to what's the need, but then I do also get the other side of the argument that like, if you think about like the Cruiserweight title, men is just implied. It's never implied that there's like a women's Cruiserweight division. Yeah. I, I I agree. Uh, Rhea Ripley, the champion, taking on Tony Storm in a rematch of the very first finals for the NXT UK Women's Title. Um, I don't see the title changing here either, but I do see Tony Storm finally going full heel. Yeah, I, I think that that's where we're cruising to here. I thought it was an interesting pairing of her against Io Shirai. But then to your point this week, that just kind of broke down where we had all those different storylines mishmashing and that has been my problem with NXT is it's just a little hard to follow. I don't know where we're going to be when we get to the other side of all these special events. Then finally in your main event of the evening, Imperium Walter Fabian Eichner, Marcel Bartel and Alexander Wolf taking on the undisputed era of Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby fish and Roderick strong. Chris, who do you have in the main event? I think Imperium's going to win this. And I think Roderick Strong's going to be the weak link. Ooh, that is uh that is intriguing. I'm uh God, that, that makes so much sense to me. I, I was thinking maybe Undisputed Era stand tall, but this I don't know if they're keeping score on this whole thing. I, I'm hoping not. I hope it's not like a Survivor Series situation. Well, who do you think is gonna win between DIY and Mustache Mountain? Uh, DIY. Okay. I think Trent Seven loses, uh, takes the fall, but uh, okay. you know, there's handshakes afterwards. So I think that ports over to what happens here in this finish, and so then that makes it more okay. likely that Imperium wins. Okay, I agree with you then. I, 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 whew, 
Oh, you know what I loved? I loved that chop that Walter gave Adam Cole at oh, the end boy. of NXT. Oh, yeah, boy. That cell was awesome. That was great. That was sexy. I loved I loved hearing that. I was like, that is violence, friends. And I would not want to take that shot. But I love somebody else taking that shot. Mm. Whew. That, that made me. Whew. I had to I had to cool off after that one. I was like, yes, give me give me all the chops in this match. Just give me Walter just killing these fools. Walter's great, night. man. He love is, him. He is really, really awesome. Absolutely love him. Uh yeah, so that is Worlds Collide, not when worlds collide, the uh subject of a lawsuit between WCW and ECW at one time. Um Leading to one of my favorite programs. I don't know if you remember this, Chris, but uh, as part of the settlement, WCW lent ECW uh, Arn Anderson and Bobby Eaton for a night for a tag match uh, with Arn Anderson and Terry Funk versus Bobby Eaton and Sabu. Whoa. I've not seen I, this. Yeah. I'll have to dig- you know I'm a big Bobby Eaton fan. I'll have to dig this up. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, you can tell the WCW guys are kind of... Uh, taking it a bit easy and just wanting to work with each other for a while, but it's a fun match to watch. I believe it is on the network. Um, You just have to search for it. Uh, So that is my old school recommendation for the week. Going back to the new school, the road to WrestleMania begins with the Royal rumble. Chris can see the daylight at the end of the path of his tenure here on shake them ropes. Keep in mind, Chris, when you're picking winners today, we do have an elimination chamber pay-per-view in between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. Every day is one day closer. <laughs> this is Lay Miz. Um, <laughs> uh, eight matches announced. We will get, get the singles matches out of the way. First for the United States Championship, Andrade taking on the returning Umberto Carrillo, who reappeared back on Raw, dressed as Rey Mysterio. Chris, who do you have winning this match? I have Andrade winning this match. I think he's I going do. to cheat to win. And yeah, I, I think that Umberto is here to make Andrade look good. And I don't understand it. I just don't. Nope. I, I, <laughs> Dude, I, I, man, I don't understand anything that goes on <laughs> in this main roster. It's it's Chinatown, as the they old They movie write said. him off for a while. He, he gets ice cold after getting beat. He gets beat. He gets beat. He makes a hot return after that ladder match. And he's going to get beat again. I just, it's so, it's like, do they want to make young stars or do they just want to have kids learn the business? Ah. Singles match for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. Bailey, the champion, taking on Lacey Evans. I'll go here. Um, I SmackDown is not yet aired. It airs uh, probably today, I guess, and this show comes out on Friday. Um, I am expecting Bailey to have the upper hand at the end of the night, which means title change. I believe Lacey Evans will become the SmackDown women's champion. This is also playing into my women's Royal rumble pick, but I think Bailey is aunt Pam's losing the title on Sunday. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that they really like Lacey Evans and they've never found a stride with the Bailey character as this heel Bailey. And I think it's fine to take the belt off of her. If you don't have a plan for her in a singles match, shorty G versus Sheamus shorty G shorty G AKA Chad Gable. In case you've been living under a rock, uh, (laughs) banana peel win. And he he beats Sheamus. Yeah. Yeah, and this feud continues. Yeah, that actually makes yeah. sense. Yep. Oh, he got an upset win. He, oh, look, yes. he escapes out to the back. And, it's it's, it's and Daniel Bryan, have Sheamus. Another, it's, yeah, another match yeah. Uh, in the future. Yes. Yeah, and Sheamus beats him like a couple times on TV after that. To, Hardcore match you know, or either stipulation by cheating. in the future. Yeah. yeah. There, I'd, I'd much rather see Gable just kill Sheamus and get a powerful win, and then it'd be like, oh, man, do you believe that? But I I just don't see that happening. Roman Reigns taking on King Corbin in a false count anywhere match. King Corbin uh, reigns supreme after dominating Roman Reigns for 20 minutes straight. Roman Reigns gets no offense in, and he drinks dog food at the end of the match. 
<laughs> are either of these guys in the Royal Rumble? Ah, uh, are you asking me or were they announced? I, I, oh wait, I, no, Roman Reigns. Roman, is, Ro- Roman yeah. Reigns is in there, and Corbin. Okay, they're both in the Rumble too. I mean, this is actually a scenario where Corbin could get some sort of banana peel victory over Roman Reigns, and it's totally forgotten about because we have the Royal Rumble match later on in the night. No, I think Reigns kills Corbin, kills Ziggler, kills Bobby Roode. Because there's no DQs in a false count anywhere match. Hurt to hurt to hurt to hurt. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think the dog food stuff has has lasted long enough, and I think Roman Reigns gets the win here. Yeah, and I I agree with you. I was just trying to spice it up by going hard the opposite. No, direction. but I I do th- I do think there are ramifications in the Rumble later. I think I think I think something happens there. I'm not sure what, but we'll talk about when we get to the Men's Royal Rumble. Uh, for the WWE Universal Championship, a strap match between the Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan. I think Daniel Bryan's going to be great here, but he's taking the loss. There's going to be no title change here. Yeah, they're not going to take the belt off of the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Daniel Bryan is going to be great in the ring. They still are not particularly committed to the Daniel Bryan babyface character. So why would they take the belt off of Bray Wyatt at this point? There was an interview with him, I believe, where they were talking about the uh, the world, um, you know, the, the planet the cycling champion. character, yeah. the planet champion character, and they said that uh, they wanted to tone down the politics of the character. The whole character, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's too political. Okay. Okay, guys. We can't. <laughs> I, I mean, I just want that to blow your ran, mind. They just... ran with the real Americans for a long time in 2013 and 2014. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? But. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Vince gonna Vince. And finally, in the singles matches, the champion Becky Lynch taking on Oscar in a singles match for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. I think the 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 conclusion is foregone. I'm just hoping this is a great match. Um, I think this feud could have been built up a little bit stronger, a little bit more heated. It was fine for what it was. Asuka was fantastic throughout this thing. Kyrie Sane being <laughs> being the flunky for Asuka was great in this thing. And Becky Lynch's promos, at least after getting misted, had some real good emotion to it. Becky Lynch, obviously, to me, is going to maintain her championship here. It would be interesting if she didn't. But, yeah, I, I, I tend to think that they're not going to take the belt off of Becky Lynch. It they would don't, be. They don't view Asuka on the main roster the same way Asuka was viewed in NXT or you and I view Asuka as an asset. It would fascinate the hell out of me if Asuka wins this and they have her lose in the Elimination Chamber. To Becky Lynch, that would that would be that would be an interesting call just to swerve us all. That oh, you all thought Becky was going to maintain her title. Nope, Asuka has her number again. But I just don't see that happening. Kyrie I, I Sane see, is that little X factor that Asuka could need to get that win. Okay, so now it's time to put on our prognosticator hats because. These two matches are for what is presumably going to be a couple of main events at WrestleMania. Of course, again, that can all change with one match in the Elimination Chamber, but who knows? Uh, The most surprises are going to come out of the Women's Royal Rumble match, where you only have five announced competitors. Yeah, I, I so wanted to far, make sure I'm that sure. I was looking at the right list here. There's only five that I have to choose from. I'm I'm assuming a lot more will be announced on SmackDown tomorrow night. But uh, for right now, the only announced competitors are Charlotte Flair, Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross, Sarah Logan, and Natalia. Chris, let, how are we going to do this? Should we go with our final four? Should we go with our winner and then our, our most likely to win and then an off the board pick? I will uh I will leave this uh game to you to uh to tell me what I should be doing here. Let's go final four. Let's do final four. I'm into that. I'm into that. Okay. Um do you want to go first or I'll go first? Yeah, I got Bailey and Sasha in the final four. And Okay. 
I'm going to say, I feel like Charlotte has to be there, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, like they, they just they like her too much. They're not going to eliminate Charlotte. So I, I've got Becky and Sasha. I'm sorry, I've got Bailey and Sasha. Charlotte. And then m- maybe, uh, is, I guess Lacey Evans could be in this Royal Rumble too, right? If she's winning the title, I doubt she's going to be in the Rumble. Yeah. Hmm. But there is a chance she's there. I mean, it, maybe she loses. Maybe she loses earlier in the evening to Bailey, and then wins the rumble later. I mean, that's a possibility. I'm, I'd be very boring if I just went with like the NXT four horsewomen. But it, it kind of feels like it could be those four: you know, Becky, Charlotte, Bailey, Sasha, and your winner, Charlotte. Okay. It's not a bad pick. Um, I like the chatter of Shayna Baszler possibly winning this rumble, but I don't think Shayna Baszler has to win this rumble because all she has to do is appear on Monday night and you have a WrestleMania main event with Becky Lynch. Man, Shayna Baszler rules. I I was just thinking about that, watching her wrestle um, hotshot Blackheart. And Shotzi Black. No, is that her name? Um, yes. Yeah, no, but I was thinking about how <laughs> Shayna Baszler can make anyone look good. She's really good. Uh, Shayna Baszler is one of my favorite wrestlers. She's awesome. Yeah, I really like her a lot. I, I just think, okay, Becky beats Asuka, and then there's only one other match where she has to uh, get a receipt, and that's from Shayna winning at Survivor Series. So all Shayna has to do is show up Monday. And you have her interest, so she doesn't need the rumble. So my prognostication is that this is going to be an opponent for the SmackDown Women's Champion, who's going to be Lacey Evans. So my final four is going to be Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss, Charlotte, and Nia Jax, who returns here. And I think Nia Jax wins this rumble and we start the Hogan build for Lacey Evans versus Nia Jax at WrestleMania. I think Bailey and Sasha probably get relegated into a multi-team match with Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross and the Iconics and the Kabuki Warriors for the tag team titles. But I think if you're going to bring Nia Jax back, which I think they're going to here, I think uh, you got a Booker as a super monster. No, I I like this and she has Lacey to Hogan sort of vision. I it's it's more exciting than what they're doing with the title right now, and it's been a while since they've done that type of character, especially with a woman. Uh, so like I actually I like this. I, it'll be interesting. I don't know that I love Nia Jax as King Kong Bundy. Right. I'm. I mean, look. I'm I'm open to the possibility that. Sasha Banks is going to be sacrificed to Lacey in February. I also am perfectly fine with a three-way match at WrestleMania between Bailey, Sasha, and Lacey Evans so that the two veterans can help make her look good. And then you have some splitting between Bailey and Sasha in terms of that team. But I think they're going to want to give Lacey Evans a strong win. I think they're going to try and make her as marketable as possible with the military backstory and the, and the mom backstory. I just, to me, it seems like you build up Nia Jax here as a monster. And then you put her up against the woman's right. And that's a, that's a, that's a Vince McMahon tailor-made story. Uh, The kind of outside of the box answer along similar veins would be Reina Gonzalez, who I think probably would have a more interesting match, but I think there's just not enough in-ring experience between Lacey Evans and Reina Gonzalez to carry a Mania-level match. I, I just don't see Vince putting it on somebody who hasn't been on his television nope. other than nope. Shayna No, no, Baszler. no, no. I, yeah, I mean, I even worry, though, about like Nia, like how good is the match going to be between Nia and Lacey if it goes that direction? Um, the, the idea of Tegan Knox as the female Kane throwing people out intrigues me some, but I, I just don't see Vince buying into that, even though she loves calling herself Lady Kane with the choke slam and everything. I think it's a little too early for that, although she has been on SmackDown, but that, that'll be interesting to watch. 
Uh, surprises. I don't know. I, I just, I think Shayna will be a surprise. I think there'll be plenty of NXT women in this thing. I think Casey Catanzaro is probably getting the, the Kofi spot for the women in some way now that she's back. Uh, yeah. Uh, any, any prop bets you see or any, uh, surprises you could see in this rumble. Jazzy Gabbard's out of the company. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that that's very unfortunate. She uh, she, she would tweeted be perfect, earlier this week, especially if you're going to make Lacey Evans the champion. I think they may pay her for one night. There's a possibility. I think that they could bring her in. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I I think she got injured again, or she was in another car accident, or something of that effect. Um, but I think she's banged up and not available. So that'd be uh, that'd be a miracle. But miracles tend to happen at at, at the Rumble. Uh, I could see possibly like a Kelly Kelly getting in there or, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just I, trying I, to Beth, think of Beth not Phoenix. like, you know, uh, yeah, they might bring in Beth Phoenix. I'm trying to think of like a name that would shake up the action in the division, like a big return. I don't, I don't like see that. that because uh, yeah, I there's, no, there's that. nobody there's nobody to debut really other than other than Nia back. I mean, that's the only name out there. That, uh, you know, unless Kaylee Ray comes out or not Kaylee Ray, uh, Kylie Ray comes out and you're just like, well, what's she doing here? But other than that, I just can't see anybody. Okay. It would be fun about Kylie Ray. If you brought her into the company is to have Bailey hate her and have <laughs> Bailey attack Kylie Ray. Like I, I would want to see that. For you. Familiarity yeah, breeds contempt. The deep contempt. Why are you smiling? No one likes people like that. Yeah. That's a stupid character. Why would anybody want No one likes that? inflatable tube arm guys, you <laughs> idiot. Uh, and then uh, finally, your main event probably of the evening. I don't think they're going to start with this. I think they're going to end with it. The Men's Royal Rumble, 25 names currently announced as of January 24th, 2020. Uh, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, AJ Styles, Eric Rowan, Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, Elias, King Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, Otis Tucker, Rusev, Bobby Lashley, Aleister Black, Buddy Murphy, Braun Strowman, Shinsuke Nakamura, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, Kofi Kingston, Big E, and R-Truth. 25 have been announced. I assume that Bobby Roode will probably enter tomorrow as well, making it 26. And that would leave three for NXT and one surprise. I'll go first, I think. I think you're going to have Walter in this thing. And you'll probably have Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano or Tommaso Ciampa and Tyler Bate or someone of that ilk. But I think one of your surprises is going to win this. We know Brock Lesnar's entering number one. I think your final four are going to be Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, maybe Walter, and then the winner of the Royal Rumble, Cain Velasquez. I think Cain Velasquez is returning to the WWE. He's already leaked that he's going to be at the Rumble. I think he's going to be the guy to eliminate Brock. I think Brock probably goes the distance up until Cain comes out. I just... I think it being in Texas, I think with Kane now no longer doing MMA, I think with them wanting that to be the main event of WrestleMania, I just, I just think, I think everything's there for a lot of the Panda Bear stuff that Vince likes to do with, with, uh, with ethnic superstars. I just see Kane Velasquez getting this win. And and then you get the all the press of ESPN going. Cain Velasquez leaving UFC to go to WWE, and he wins the Royal Rumble, and he'll be the main event at at uh, at WrestleMania. What do you think? I disagree. I think you're right okay. that Cain Velasquez eliminates Brock Lesnar. I think that that happens in a fairly high profile way. Right before Early. we get down to yeah, really, uh, <laughs> before we get down to the final four, though. Okay, yeah, because because as we went over when 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 Brock City was starting first, there's only two people I can see eliminating him: Matt Riddle or Cain Velasquez. Yeah, one of two things is going to happen: he's going to Brock's going to be number one, and he's going to throw out eight or nine people, and then 
Kane gets announced or Matt Rill gets announced and throws out Brock or Brock's going to go the distance in some way. And then the guy to eliminate him is going to be number 30 or number 29. Yeah. So I, so I, I went the other four way. is going to be something like Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns, because it's Roman Reigns. Yeah. Walter, I think, is going to be in it. I've got him also in my final four. And maybe, maybe John Cena. Ooh. You would put John Cena in this and not have him win it. Yes, to establish Hmm. some other heel. Maybe even huh. have Walter eliminate John Cena. That would be interesting. Walter and John Cena at Mania would be interesting as well. That I could see. I could see Cena going, I want a high profile opponent, somebody I might be able to put over, or somebody, you know, I can have a good match with. I could see them having Walter and John Cena at Mania. Yeah, that's my curve. My, it's weird to go, my curveball is John Cena, but I'm like looking at this and we were talking about those blank spots and. There is a Cena-sized hole here, and he would be really interesting to have in here as like a late, a late extra jolt of energy into this Royal Rumble. Percentage chance CM Punk is a surprise entrance in here. Low, because I don't think Punk would want to come back if he wasn't going to win. Right, I agree there. I do you hold out any chance that they could and that he does win and finally gets to main event his WrestleMania? Not this year. I, I think it would okay. be more built up a little bit. Uh, but it would be it'd be interesting to see him, you know, come back down for one more run for sure. Percentage chance the Undertaker is in this rumble. Uh, oh, in the, Texas. In Texas. Uh, yeah, probably. Because he's going to have some sort of match at Mania, right? I think so. Yeah, so um, it'll, it'll be eliminated by, I don't know, some heavy... Uh, maybe Bobby Lashley. And then, but you know, I, I don't know who, who will take her dismantle at mania. It's actually going to have to be who, someone a little smaller than Lashley. Probably. Right. Who eliminates the most people? Some, no, no, Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar. It's going to go Samoa Joe, but I stopped myself. Cause I remember Brock Lesnar's in this. I was thinking about Otis for a second giving him that push, but I do think it's going to be Brock Lesnar. I think Brock Lesnar is going to eliminate half this field. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ray Mysterio, like, like here, let's play a game. Ricochet. Elias. Absolutely. Um, Dolph Ziggler probably, probably eliminates Tucker and Otis. I, I mean, I'm just looking, you know, this is just like the people who've announced, but yeah, there's a lot of people Brock Lesnar would eliminate with very little effort. Even Aleister Black and Buddy Murphy not, will be tied up with each other. There's not a lot of those, yeah, there's not a lot of those guys in this rumble, though. I mean, there's no, I mean, Ali is not in it. Uh, there's not a lot of cruiserweights in it. There's not a lot of lucha house party type guys, and you'd think, but there's low I mean, level is, heavy guys that are perfect for Brock Lesnar to get rid of. Yeah, and everybody gets their hopes up as they, they come out. Like, oh man, here comes Kevin Owens. He gets thrown out by Brock. Yeah, here comes Bobby Lashley. I mean, this guy's a physical specimen. He's also fought in MMA. Gone. You know, I could see I could see Brock eliminating like Otis and Tucker, yep. yeah, yeah, and Elias and Rey Mysterio, even Braun Strowman and, and Brock could Ricochet. have a good little exchange, and Brock gets the better of it and just tosses Braun over the top. Okay, so your winner is my winner is uh, Roman Reigns. Chris has Roman Reigns. I have Kane Velasquez in the Women's Rumble. I have Nia Jax, and Chris has Charlotte. I believe. Is, yeah, was I your want pick? Charlotte. Okay, I'm really boring this year, but it just it feels like they're not. You have chalk. You're you're betting chalk in the not, tournament. They're not digging deep with this build. So no, you know, I mean, if they're not digging deep, why would they do something wild cardy here? Because they can always change it in February or in March. That's true. It's, we can uh, fix it in Elimination post. Chamber is early. Mar- Elimination Chamber is March 8th this year. Uh, you can always, you know, have someone pull off an upset and then lose lose the chance, or you can switch the title off of whoever you want. I could see them switching the title off The Fiend very easily in the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, I, I, that's um, possible for sure. But I I see the Women's Rumble 
giving us a SmackDown match and the Men's Rumble giving us a Raw match. Will the Elimination so I, I Chamber went, be entirely in the Fiend Red? I don't know. I don't know. It also depends on what they decide to, what titles they decide to have in the chamber because there's always the chance they could put the cruiserweight title in the chamber this year. They've put the women's tag match titles already in the chamber. They put the men's tag titles. They put singles titles in there. They put women's singles titles in there. We just don't know which way they could go and they could just always throw us a curveball. They could put an NXT title in the chamber this year. And I think people would buy it. I think it's one of those things that keeps the, it keeps the intrigue alive on the road to WrestleMania, even though I hate it as a match being in between rumble and mania, because there's just it trivializes too much of a event. chance. Somebody gets hurt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I, I think it should be better built to, and not just kind of this weird, very extreme pay-per-view in between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. If you want my hot takes for the post-Rumble, I will be on the Fightful post-show broadcast. They have gotten their YouTube channel back so they can monetize their damn site. And your boy, the prodigal son, has returned going back to Fightful to give some analysis post-Rumble. Chris is knee deep in election stuff. Yeah, it's getting interesting Chris. these days. Don't worry. TV is where you can find. Don't worry about the government. I'll be getting a new episode up of that. Also, it in good news. I the All in the Family podcast will be making its triumphant return. I've worked out a production schedule with my co-host here, and so we'll be doing some tapings. We're having some episodes out here this weekend, so I'm excited about that. Um, do you? Did you not want to talk about AEW this week? No. Well, we talked about the tag title switching. Yeah, that's true. I guess we did. All right. Well, then that, that'll basically do it for this show. 